The road to hell is paved with good intentions. I've heard that plenty of times before. I've said it plenty of times myself. I don't really overthink it anymore like I used to. Now I just kind of take it for granted. Before it seemed like such a strange phrase, like such an extremely negative way to, to consider good intentions. Point well taken though. I was watching the uh, newest Star Trek movie recently. So Spock has a girlfriend, Uhura, and he gave her a necklace as a gift. As the story unfolds and uh, as the crew journeys through deep space, they come to an alien world, they're attacked, and most of the crew is captured. Captain Kirk, Spock, McCoy, Scotty, and along with a friend from another world, uh, they're left to figure out where the crew is and how to save them. At that point, Spock remembers uh, that the necklace that he gave his girlfriend, who's part of the crew and who's been captured, that necklace is made out of a material that can be located, that can be tracked quite easily. And their small team recognizes the complication of that right away. So you gave her a tracking device to wear as jewelry? <laughs> to which Spock responds, feeling a little awkward about it. Um, well, that was not my intention. <laughs> Sometimes what we do doesn't quite pan out according to our good intentions. Uh, while I'm here uh, mentioning intentions, it's not exactly what we're looking at uh, from the scripture. What I'm referencing is Paul's words to the Thessalonians, telling them that he's praying that God will fulfill every good resolve and every work of faith. That God will make them worthy of God's call upon their lives. God has called them to follow Jesus, to be something more than they ever were before to take on a divine mission, to go where and to do what God says for their own well-being and for the well-being of the world. That in itself is beyond us as human beings because we need God to get us all the way there. And that's exactly what Paul is praying for. Now, even though we need God to get us there, we can go a long way on our own. One might think of starting out with good intentions, but really it's more than that. Um, starting, our starting place is a good resolve. Thinking about resolve, I think of when it was time for Jesus to start heading to the cross. When that time came, Jesus turned his face toward Jerusalem. He set his face resolutely toward Jerusalem. He more than intended to get there. He was resolved to go there. Nothing would stand in his way. No fear of authorities looking to, to harm him, um, to capture him, even to kill him. Disciples and even um, other authorities who liked him didn't want him to go and were warning him. But Jesus set his face toward Jerusalem and he, he could not be swayed. That's where he was going. No matter what. God had something for him to do. And that's it. He was going to do it. And he did, just as he resolved to do. That's what I think of when I think of starting with a, a good resolve. Setting out to do something. It's not just a, a halfway commitment. It's a full-on, full-hearted commitment. Jesus resolved to go to Jerusalem. And then that actually going was a work of faith. I think it's fitting how um, Paul talks to the Thessalonians about the good resolve and their, um, their works of faith and everything else. Uh, it's fitting that these things are in light of the church's endurance. That has everything to do with everything Paul says to them. Everything he writes should be understood in light of their endurance. Their growing faith, their love for one another, their steadfastness in faith, their good resolve and their works of faith. They were not being led astray by the persecution they were facing. They became stronger and more, com more committed Christians by the day. 
Jesus set that example. Jesus knew persecution was waiting on him in Jerusalem. And what's so remarkable about his willingness to go to Jerusalem was his willingness to face the suffering and death that waited on him there. And that's exactly what's so remarkable about the Thessalonian church. It's their willingness to remain faithful and even grow in their faith despite facing suffering and death in their own right. Gun to your head, do you still insist on loving your neighbor? It's hard for most of us to put ourselves in those shoes. We live in a far different place, but even here in modern, predominantly Christian America, people are put to the test like that. In Charleston, South Carolina, a loving group of Christians opened their doors and arms to a young man to join them for Bible study. A black congregation welcoming a young white man to study Bible with them only to be murdered in cold blood. Will the people of that congregation open their doors and their arms to the next young white man who walks in? I'm sure they will. I bet they already have. This extreme kind of commitment to God's love is exactly what Paul is referencing about the Thessalonians. But not all of us have dealt with or ever will deal with that kind of situation. I think for the rest of us, we might relate better to Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, that wee little man who climbed the tree to see Jesus in a crowd. The chief tax collector who was very rich, he wronged a lot of people. He took a lot of money that didn't belong to him. He made life harder and more painful for many. He committed his share of sins. Yet here he is in the tree yearning just to see the Messiah. And then Jesus sees him, identifies him, comes over and basically invites himself over to Zacchaeus' house to stay. And of course, Zacchaeus is overjoyed to have him, thrilled at the opportunity. And in the presence of Jesus, Zacchaeus renounces his old ways and he says to Jesus, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I'll give to the poor. If I've defrauded anyone of anything, I'll pay it back four times as much. Good resolve and works of faith. Take a moment to stop and think about that. Have you wronged anybody ever in your life? Whether or not it has to do with money, uh, have you said or done anything that's made life harder and more painful for another person? And do you have the good resolve to act on your faith to make it right and to make it up to that person? As people of faith, uh, this kind of thing isn't just asked of us. It's expected. That being said, we can go a long way on our own. But we can't quite get there on our own. Paul's prayer is for God to make you worthy of your calling. For God to fulfill your good resolve and your works of faith. Just like with good intentions, sometimes what we do doesn't always pan out according to our good resolve. No matter how committed we are. We just can't do it all on our own. When we apologize, we pray that our apology will be accepted. When we give to the poor, we pray that the money will be handled appropriately and will do some good for a person's life. When we face the most frightening circumstances, we pray that God will provide the strength we need to stay true. By fulfilling the divine things that we set out to do, God makes us worthy of God's calling. And thank the Lord for God's good resolve. While the road to hell probably isn't actually paved with good intentions, the road to heaven is definitely paved with love. God's love. So out of love, let us commit ourselves fully to what's right. Out of love, may God fulfill every good resolve and every good work of faith. May God make us worthy. Amen.